Alita, you got your hair cut. You look so beautiful. Thank you. Marriage looks good on you. Oh, well, thank you, my friend. Hey, guys. Okay, we're going to wait for just a second for a few people to join us. I am so excited about this call. Do you guys have your pen and paper ready? This woman's about to bring the heat. She's one of my favorite people in the entire universe. No pressure. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, that's so sweet. <laughs> okay, well, let's get the party started because I want to um, take advantage of this time that we have with Alita. So welcome team, our February call. I'm so excited we meet up. For those of you who are new, we meet up the first Monday of every month. And I ask somebody that is um, has been successful within our company um, to come and just share their tips, a little bit of their story. I'm going to turn this bright light off behind me. Um, they're a little bit of their story because they're so beautiful. I love how each story is different. Um, and so Alita is one of my very favorites. You will um, love her as soon as she opens her mouth. She's got a beautiful story. And one of the things that I love about her story is that she had to make this opportunity work. She didn't have a lot of time. She didn't have a lot of resources with people to help her with her family. She was going through a very traumatic situation, but she made it work. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm going to pass this over to Alita. We will have about 10 minutes of questions um, at the end, if Alita is okay with that. And then we'll hop over to our accountability call after this is done. So Alita, take it away. Well, thank you so much. First of all, I want to take you and put you in my pocket and take you everywhere so that you can say all those nice things. <laughs> I would feel like a million bucks. Thank you so much for asking me to come on and share with you guys. I really, really consider it such an honor anytime I get to share my story or talk about what Plexus has done for me. So I'm super, super passionate about Plexus business opportunity. So I started out really um, excited about the products and really nervous too. So I started really skeptical of just kind of like, I don't know about these products. So I said no for 18 months to Jennifer Leith, you know, the feisty redhead who's hilarious, her. So she would, she actually bought a cow for me, y'all. Bought a cow off of my farm like just always like, girl, you need to do this business with me, you know? So she'd come to my farm and we laugh about it now, but, um, I told her no for 18 months because I thought I just, you know, I'm not really into that stuff. So needless to say, I started and I, um, started a business and I got to senior Ruby and then my husband passed away. I became suddenly widowed. I had four small kids under the age of six and we had no life insurance. And I knew that I was drawing my line in the sand. And that's why I'm so passionate about this business is that Jennifer, when she was sharing with me, didn't know what my story would look like. She didn't know that that's what, what it would, what I would be needing later on. And so I always just say, you don't know what people are going through. Even if you think you know them, even if you think that, you know, oh, they don't need the money or they don't need this. You never know when someone's going to have to just quit their job and stay home and take care of their parents or when something is going to happen that they're going to need this business opportunity. So please do not stop sharing. Like I scream it from the rooftops. I also love sharing my story because it ends with a lot of hope and a lot of restoration. So I've remarried, happily remarried. Uh, we have seven children and um, it's crazy amazing and only good things happening. So I'm really excited to be on here tonight and sharing with you kind of some tips that have really made my business um, explode. And so one of the things that I love to think about is being intentional. And so I just actually got off a team call with Jennifer and I were doing our team call and we were setting intentional thoughts for February. And what I wanted to just share with you is kind of what I had written down when I was just really thinking about your team and what I wanted to share and what of anything I could hopefully offer um, of anything that would maybe help you is that I love to have a blueprint, a blueprint of success. So not just kind of winging it. And this is coming from a professional winger. So y'all, like if anybody was a winger, that would be me. Okay. That's like me just waking up and being like, let's, what are we going to do today? So I love that. I love the spontaneity of it and I love the excitement of it, but I also really have learned to thrive 
So there's a difference between surviving your business and thriving in your business. I've really learned to thrive in my business with a blueprint of success. And I can actually measure it month to month with my numbers based upon, am I doing the daily things that are the blueprint for my success? Number one for me is listening to a podcast of personal growth. When I set my mind into a place of just feisty, like, yes, I'm going to be a go-getter. I'm going to do this. Really deciding when you, I love to think of it this way, um, is your thoughts are like sending out emails to the world. Are you thinking things like, I can't wait to work my Plexus business. I can't wait to share on social media because who's going to see it today? Whose life is going to change because they're witnessing what I'm being vulnerable and opening up to the world. Who does that person get to be today? Who is the person I'm going to message today that really hears from me? Because when we broadcast a message, which we do, it's either for the positive or it's for the negative. So I really like to set my mind to the positive place before I do anything else. So that is on my blueprint for success is 10 minutes a day, at least of those podcasts. I actually have started paying my children $5 for every personal growth podcast that they choose to listen to, because I think that is where the magic happens is when you're really believing in yourself, believing that you can do it. So I was senior Ruby and I went from senior Ruby points, like 750 points to Emerald within three months. And that was through some serious grief, some serious loss with four little kids and a nursing baby. What I did is I got freaking serious about my business. I put up a whiteboard in my bedroom and I wrote down some affirmations. I wrote down who I was, who I wanted to be and what that person looked like. I am victorious. I'm an overcomer. People, people see me coming. People think I'm a force to be reckoned with. Y'all, I was not that before. I was not wearing pink lipstick and having my hair like, I don't even know how to do this thing. What it was is I was wearing rubber boots, killing chickens on weekends, not having any kind of confidence in myself. You are a force to be reckoned with. You sitting here showing up to this Zoom are a force to be reckoned with. That you get to decide with your voice what you're going to put out there to the world, what message you're sending. You are a force to be reckoned with. And nobody gets to take that from you. Nobody gets to say, you're just a mom. Or, hey, you've got a full-time job. You can't. Or, you've got nothing valuable to say. That is just not freaking the truth. It is not the truth. You are forced to be reckoned with. And if I can pop through this screen and grab your face in my hands and say, you are so worth it. I would. And it makes me passionate. And you probably tell, I get on a little bit of a soapbox about it because I know what it feels like to be on the other end thinking, this is never going to work for me. I wonder if this is going to happen. But when your world is switched upside down and all of a sudden you don't have a choice, all of a sudden you believe in something. So what if we knew before anything even had to happen that we could do anything we dreamed of? We could do anything if we just simply believe it. And how do we get that belief? We get it by pouring it into us. And then out of that overflow, we're sharing it with others around us. So this was not me. My very first video I made literally in a milk barn, nursing a baby, being like, well, you could go silver if you want to, you know, just grab three friends. And I'm like, I don't know if you want to, but you totally don't have to. So don't worry about it. Like you grow and you learn as you grow. So the biggest thing is anything right now, if I said to you, um, okay, somebody just unmute yourself and tell me what your goal is. What rank you'd want to be in Plexus? Emerald. The Emerald. Emerald. Okay, so who, who was that? Who said that? Anna said it. Anna? Okay, where's Anna? Anna, can you unmute? Hannah. Oh, Hannah said Hannah. it. Oh, Hannah! <laughs> Hannah! Hi. Hi. You're gorgeous. Okay, so you oh, want to be you. Emerald. Okay. Yes. Can, can I ask your approval to kind of ask you some questions? Sure. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So you want to be Emerald. Tell me why you're not Emerald yet. A uh, good question. <laughs> well, it's taken, it's definitely a journey. And like you were saying, it's just a process on the growth that needs to happen. And I am on a new, new journey in the past like few months. So 
it's it's happening it's coming shortly my goal is by april so april well that's huge that's yeah. amazing that's amazing amazing so when i ask her that i would like for all of you guys to think that so i had to ask myself that if this is my goal if i want to be emerald why am I not? Or why do I think it's going to take me X amount of time to get there or that this is never going to happen for me? And a lot of times, if we really dig down, we will start to say things like, well, it's just because, you know, this is happening or that's happening. And most of the time, it's because we're not really deciding and drawing our line in the sand. We're letting fear block us from really moving forward, from really attracting those people into our business and from really stepping out of our comfort zone into that place. So, and I want to explain the difference and what I mean is that, you know, when I was senior Ruby going for Emerald before anything had happened to me, before I'd really decided like, I'm like just so into this and I'm doing it, I would get in this real big rut in my head. Like I remember going from adding 50 people a month to my team at the time to seven. And I remember being like, what is happening right now? What is going on? Or I'd go forward and then I'd go backwards. And I remember just thinking like, why is this not happening for me? And I'd get in this rut in my head of like, well, I guess I could message that person, but really right now I need to be working over here. And then I need to be posting on Facebook and then I just wouldn't do anything. And I get paralyzed in this place of just sort of going around in this rut. Can anybody kind of relate to that? Where you're just sort of spinning around. What happens when you decide to get really serious and when you decide to flip that switch that says no more BS, I'm going to step out in faith and I'm going to step out in belief in myself and I'm going to borrow confidence that I do not have from somewhere down deep and I'm just going to do it. You start to share Plexus with a whole lot more people than you even thought about before. Something shifts, something changes. The atmosphere changes when you're in the room because for some reason, somewhere down deep, you found this unknown confidence that you didn't know you had. Because so many times we're waiting on, like when I'm sharing silver with somebody, I don't ever just stop at the first no. When I'm sharing plexus with somebody, I never stop at the first no. When I'm asking somebody for any kind of information, like we've been going through a lot of, um, things like with adoption with kids and stuff like that. And it's like, we just, I never stop at the first no, because I know somebody knows the answer and I know somebody can help us and we can move mountains. And I know that. And so what I really think about is when I was sharing plexus from a place of just sheer, like this is happening. I knew that I could not expect a potential or brand new ambassador to have the confidence to post on Facebook. If I didn't have the confidence to show up and keep asking and keep sharing. I knew that they needed to borrow my confidence in Plexus. Does that make sense? Does that kind of resonate with anybody how they're borrowing our confidence and really getting to sort of feel how that feels to be excited about Plexus and know that it's okay to be excited and be okay to post about Plexus. If that makes any sense, I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> I'm kind of excited and rambling, but Basically what I'm saying is dig down deep, find that confidence in yourself that says no excuses, that says I'm going to show up for my business no matter how I feel because life happens. And that's the question I get asked the most. What happens when life happens? So if you're on here and life has happened to you, can you just like drop a comment or something? Let me know. Hey, life has happened. And even say in there, like, what is happening? I would love to like hear situations of things that you feel like are just really hard to overcome because, you know, I don't know everyone's circumstances and sometimes people compare circumstances to other circumstances, but listen, hard is hard. My business was hard to work when I had four kids under six and was on a farm. My business is hard to work when all my kids are in school now and everything you know, is a little bit easier. I'm remarried. My business is still hard to work. My business is hard to work through grief, losing both my parents. My business has been hard to work in each stage. So life always happens and business is always hard because you have to be self-motivated in our business to show up for it consistently. Okay. So let me read here real fast. Did we get some things? Life is happening. Small kids at home. Yes. Okay. So life is crazy. So one of the things that really helps to really create success with that 
is to make sure you have a blueprint. Again, a blueprint of success of what it is that you're going to do no matter what. The other thing that I did is I actually took out a piece of paper and I wrote down in circles because I'm very professional. I wrote out in circles how many friends or family I needed to join my team from where I was at to my next rank and what I wanted to do. It was old school and I just checked them off check by check. I was flying a lot back and forth to Canada because my parents were ill and I was talking to people on the airplane about Plexus and signing them up, complete strangers. If you ever would have told me four years ago that I'd be sitting on airplanes, signing up strangers, wearing pink lipstick and thinking like, I, I got this, I would have been like, yo crazy, okay? That never ever would have been me or what happened. I have unleashed and let up the confident Alita, the Alita that sees that nothing stands in my way, the Alita that saw a vision for something more for her family. I unleashed the Alita that said, nobody could steal my joy from me, no matter my circumstances, no matter what was going on, that I was going to rise above, that again, when I walk into a room, the atmosphere changes and I'm a force to be reckoned with. I told myself that every single day. And what happened was I actually started to believe it. Now, there is a difference between being crazy cocky, I'm not talking about going in and being crazy, but what I'm talking about is believing in yourself and believing that you're making a difference where you go. I never thought I had a voice to share. I never thought that I had, what I had to say mattered or that anybody would even listen for that matter. Why would people care? Maybe they didn't care about the products or maybe they didn't care about the business. But here's what I've learned is that people do. And there are people like you and there are people like me sitting in their house right now, maybe going to bed, crying, praying for an answer to their problem. And what if we actually just changed our mindset to realize that our boldness is attached to their blessing? So if, if Jennifer had stopped sharing, I would not be in this position right now. So what if you not stepping out of your comfort zone? And I can tell you, if I was on a call like this, listening to this four years ago, what I would have heard is, this is what I would have heard. I would have been like, well, I'm trying and I do feel kind of confident and I'm, I really am trying. But if you're thinking that and you're not where you want to be, I'm going to challenge you to dig deeper and ask yourself, am I actually doing the things that I need to do with the mindset and the heart and the passion that I need to do it in? Have I unleashed the inner Lacey that's like, I am a force to be reckoned with y'all. I'm about to come up and I'm about to show y'all what's about to happen because that's the kind of thing. And I will never forget. I was in a church service. I was, I was singing and, um, my friend had come and grabbed me and she's like, Oh my gosh, Alita, you're on the leaders board. And this is like two months after, you know, catastrophe had hit my family. And I'm just like, Oh, I literally, I have chills thinking about it because it literally didn't even feel like anything that I had done. It didn't feel like I hustled so hard. Like I just got out there and was crazy. But what I did is I was so intentional with my time. So when I was reaching out to people, I cared. When I was reaching out to people, that inner Alita that was like, I'm a force to be reckoned with showed up. It was not the Alita that was like, well, you can, if you want to, and I'm like, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't know show if you want to. It was like this new person had emerged and was like, I'm here for, I'm here for it. I'm here for the show. I'm here to show up and make a difference. So I would really just ask you to dig deep and say, am I showing up for myself? Am I showing up for my team? Am I showing up for the people that are attached to my boldness? Uh, I think it was Brooke McKellery that said that, and I'm trying to think of exactly what her quote was, and I just thought it was so good. Our boldness is attached to their blessing. And so really thinking about, am I actually being bold? Am I actually stepping out and being real intentional? So that's the thing. And really, it kind of goes with the theme of your whole business. Being bold and being intentional with going silver and sharing silver, do not give up. I am um, Jennifer and I just did a sip and see tonight and we were laughing because we're both so out of practice. I basically took, you know, seven months off, moved to Canada and was able to kind of take a reprieve, came back, got married. Life has been crazy. And it's been such a gift to have residual income to do that in and to share. 
And so we were doing this sip and see together and we were cracking up because we're both super, we're both super awkward and we're both like, we like to laugh a lot. So we're laughing and giggling the whole entire time at the sip and see while well, I have signed up my doctor. So she's my doctor. Okay. So super professional setting. And then there's me and Jennifer. And we're just like, this is hilarious. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right people. I'm like, she's my doctor. If I signed her up two years ago, I'd have been like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so scared. I don't know what to say. Now I'm just like, yo, Tyroma, doc, hey doc, like post on Facebook. I'm messaging her every day. I remember, I'm like, I'll wake up in the morning. I'm like, hey, I was just thinking about you. Like, I really hope you post today. I know you're going to change so many lives. The next day when she still hasn't posted, I'm not like, man, why won't she post? I'm like, this is what I think, man. When that was me, I was really scared to post too. So I'll say, hey, I bet you're scared. I'm feeling scared too. Hope you post today. Let me know so I can comment. The next day when she still hasn't posted, I'm like, yo, doctor, I, I think you're amazing. And I'm like, tell me what you're loving about the products. Okay, you're loving this part of it. You know what? That'd be such a great post for whoever's there or whoever can hear it. And then I'm gonna say, hey, let's have a sip and see. So not only did she post, but she had a sip and see. And that was not because I had some magic thing to say, but it was that the inner Alita showed up and was like, I'm a force to be reckoned with. I'm not afraid. And I'm going to keep asking. And it wasn't annoying. It was just like, Hey, I'm just thinking about you. And I thought about this. So that continual follow-up, if you ask yourself, am I being bold in my follow-up? Am I showing up for my potential? Am I showing up? Because what we're saying is I see something in you. I see something in you so much so that I'm remembering to follow up with you. And we can only see that in someone else when we can see it in ourselves. So if I really believe that, okay, this is my year, 2020 is it, I'm going for it, like it's happening, we're doing this, you know, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna be really bold in my follow up because I believe that it's gonna happen. And we're gonna keep showing up for them. And we're going to remind ourselves that the inner lacy is coming out and it's like a force to be reckoned with and that we have something to say and that we have something to share. And we're going to show up again and again and again. And we're going to think about that person and we're going to write their name down and we're going to remember to follow up with them because we're going to set alarms on our phone. I have a, two alarms on my phone right now. One that goes off at 10 45 AM that says I am the master of retention. I have another one that comes on that reminds me that other people's blessings attach to my boldness. I am not bold and brave because I was born that way as much as I really, really wish I could say I was just, you know, that just happened for me. It was a skill set that I learned. I did not just pop up one day wearing pink lipstick and having long eyelashes and just like being able to talk on Zoom calls like this. I used to be really nervous. I used to be really scared. And I used to do sip and sees holding note cards in front of me, shaking like this. But when I was going for Emeralds, something shifted in me. And I wish I could go back to the old Alita and say, girl, you had it in you all the time. You had it in you all along. I started doing sip and sees at um, laundromats. If people said they couldn't come, I was like, where are they at? We'll just go to them. And we would go to them. I have literally done that. So what I'm saying to you is, are you doing everything out of your comfort zone, stepping out, being bold, being bolder than you were yesterday? Are you doing those things? Because here's the cool part is after you start doing it, it just starts to feel normal. It just starts to feel like that's okay. That's kind of my everyday thing. Being a little more bolder, being a little more excited and a little more passionate and finding that inner you that's just going to pop out and be like, yeah, I got this. So I hope that makes sense. I kind of feel like I was all over the place, but you know. You just brought, you brought church. Like <laughs> tears. I mean, amazing. I can't even, I don't even know. Don't stop sharing because you never know someone's story. Is your, your boldness is attached to others, others' blessings. I mean, beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, who has questions? Speak up or forever hold your peace. This is like our time with Alita Allen Langford. <laughs> You're so sweet. Okay, Lacey, I, have I love your face, by the way. I kept, I kept seeing you, so I just wanted to holler at you. Yeah. 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> Unmuted. We love Lacey. Okay, so I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. I have a girl. This is just like a real life scenario. Mm -hmm. um, she is just going back from maternity leave. It has like wrecked her heart having mm -hmm. to go and leave her baby in daycare. I played college soccer with her. And so I have a connection and I love her. And I have been bold and I've been brave and I've called her on the phone. I've left probably two voicemails. I'm like sending her mess text messages and I'm like, this could be for you. And I've sent a diamond documentary and she has responded like twice. <laughs> well, that's good. So, um, but she's still like, I don't know. So I, I hear this and I'm like, okay, well, I want to keep going. I keep want to pursue her. Um, but it's like how I don't know it's I don't want to like saying. okay what do you have to say <laughs> to that so what I would say to that is if you really see this for her if you really believe in it for her I would write her name on your bathroom mirror and I would really keep her at the forefront of your mind and I would really just kind of keep thinking about her and just like really intentionalizing your messaging to her so anytime anything pops up you're like I really don't want to bother you and I'm sorry but like you literally do not leave my mind because I just have such a heart for you. I'm, I can't imagine, you know, having to go back to work after having a baby. Um, you know, I'm just thinking about you. I would start, I wouldn't do all plexus. I would do a lot of personal reach out, but listen, Jennifer Leaf reached out to me for 18 months, bought a cow from me. She would show up to my cheese classes. She was, she was intentional about building a relationship with me. Um, most of it was online. Most of it was, you know, just through, um, connecting on Facebook. But a lot of it was, you know, once a month, she was definitely like straight up bold. She would get, it was like, she'd get a little surge of courage and she'd reach out to me about the business. And sometimes I'd answer and sometimes I wouldn't. So what I would say is keep going. And like, tonight's a perfect example. I used to love doing that. I still do. I'm like, Hey, I was just going to call. And you know, she said something that just really reminded me of you. And I actually brought your name up even because I just think of you so much as just somebody who could really be amazing at this business. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And just thinking of them and knowing in your heart that you're not doing anything wrong, that you're not bothering them, that, you know, when I look back and think about the Jennifer Lee stuff, I remember literally like getting a little smile on my face. Like she wants to be on the team. I don't even know what that means, but it's like, yeah, like, I don't know, but it just makes you feel good. Who doesn't want to hear nice things about themselves. Right. So really, it's just you encouraging her and uplifting her and thinking, how can I encourage and uplift? Because if I add value to her, it doesn't matter. You've done your job. Because when we're planting seeds, eventually we will see the fruit of that, whether that's in plexus or not, right? It's, it's an all over great uh, skill set to learn, to do, habit to get into. <laughs> that's better. So I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, I was going to say, you said that you were not at all interested. But then you said you jumped in and then you like started with the business. So how yeah. did that transition happened going from not at all interested to now I'm like super passionate about the business. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Um, who asked that question? I couldn't see. Emily Burgess. Oh, it was you. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. You're like, it's Emily. Um, okay. So that is so, it is so interesting because that is exactly what happened was basically I had watched, it was Jennifer vision casting. So when she was reaching out to me, it was, it was a little bit about the products, but mostly it was about the business. And so when you're vision casting like that into somebody, you're telling them what you see in them as a business builder before they even agree to sign up. And that's why I think you see so often, a lot of people will say, always start prospecting with the business opportunity and then defaulting onto the products. Because what happens is even if they decide to take the products, typically speaking, usually they'll, that seed will have been planted. So when they do join for the products eventually, which they will, then they're going to want to go silver at least. So I would just say like really contemplating and thinking about, you know, when we're uplifting and messaging people, really thinking about what would make them really great as a Plexus ambassador, um, as somebody like when you would picture them, are they gold? Are they ruby? Are they an emerald? I can see you as a plexus jewel and you probably don't even know what that means. Ha 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 ha. But it doesn't matter because I can see you like this. Here's Timmy Yancey's diamond documentary. You know, that kind of thing. So how do you go from that conversation of starting with the business to back to their health on 
the products. Okay. So, um, I do, I send a lot of videos. Um, and I used to be so afraid of like answering any of these kind of questions because I'm like, I don't really know <laughs> all the things I say or do per se. Um, but what I do is I send a lot of videos. So what I would say to somebody, so let's say I have like Tyroma, this doctor, I was, I was sharing Plex with her, with her for about three or so years. I've been sharing Plexes with her. Every time I go into the doctor's office, every time she's like, oh my gosh, I don't know how your blood work is so amazing, but it is. Um, and you know, every time I go in there, I'm always like Plexus, Plexus, but I'd always talk about the business opportunity. So I really planted seeds and vision casted with the business. And, you know, girl, you would just be amazing at this. People love you. You have such influence with people. You care about people's health. You are a perfect candidate for being someone who'd be very successful in this business. And then I would, if she said, well, what are the products like? I send a product video. So I kind of wait for them. I kind of, I don't think there's any like concrete way to do that. I sort of just feel them out. Or sometimes I would message them both and say, Hey, you know, um, I would love to talk to you about what I do. And I would include that in with, you know, it's a gut health company. The products are legit. That's what I normally say. Like, I don't even know if that's a real professional word or not, but that's what I use. I'm like, these products are legit. You'd be amazing at this business opportunity because the products 100% work and you are a leader in your community and you're an influencer and people love what you have to say, you know, and I love how you lead at blah, 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 church, whatever. Um, so I kind of incorporate both, but I try to keep the product to like a sentence and then I let the video do the talking for me. I have a question. Um, that like boldness line you were talking about, is there, <laughs> how do you like different, differentiate between being like bold and confident and sharing and like continually reaching out to people even if they've maybe said no for a time and then that like I guess it's really just a fear or maybe even an excuse of like pushing them away or being like a network marketer and like falling into into that trap like is there a line there or you just have to know your like your own intentions and that they're pure and that I think you really care what people think well I think you really answered the question better than I ever could. <laughs> um, that was a really good question and answer. Um, because I think that that's exactly right. Because there's, I feel like there's always a line we can cross that. Um, and I think we all know when that happens and I think we can feel it in our gut, right? It's that feeling of like, Oh, you know, I was really pushing for a goal and I might've pushed just a little too hard. So you guys kind of talk about like, there's that feeling where you're like, I'm feeling a little desperate there's, that is crossing a line, I feel like, but what I do know is that when we're bold, and like I said, when you're literally saying, I am a force to be reckoned with, I am showing up, and the atmosphere changes when I'm in the house, there is a difference when you're messaging somebody with like, I'm a force to be reckoned with, and I see greatness in you, you're not saying, I'm a force to be reckoned with, do what I say, I'm here to convince you to take plexus, it's saying, I'm a force to be reckoned with, come along with me, come along because you also are forced to be reckoned with. And I want to see you just soar to the top. I want to see you exceed every life goal you have. So to me, when I think of that intention and that heart behind messaging somebody, I could never be messaged enough. Emily could message me every day and say, I'm a force to be reckoned with girl. I just can't stop thinking about you. You would shift the atmosphere when you're around. People love you and would follow you anywhere. I think you would be amazing at this business. That would never get old to me. That would never get old to me. I would never think, you know what? That's just really annoying. <laughs> I would be like, okay, well, that's cool because for real, when this, I mean, statistically speaking, the last time people were praised or appreciated was their high school graduation. The last time people were recognized was maybe their college education. I never even went to college, university, whatever. I didn't, I didn't do any of that. But the last time most people were recognized, the last time people were applauded for doing stuff was not, you know, was a long time ago. You're not getting applauded for doing dishes. You're not getting praised for going to work every day and making an income. You know, Plexus is all about recognition and a culture that really empowers people to believe in more and believe in something bigger. So I really think that keeping our mind on that and that what annoys people is when they think we're coming to take. 
So if I'm coming to you to take from you, that's annoying. But if I'm coming to you to empower you, regardless of whether you show up for plexus or not, then I can't go wrong. So Lita, when you, so like we do accountability group where we focus on 5311 or 3211, at least, at least five reach outs a day. Slowly, you're going to get out of that war market and you are having to build new relationships. It's a cycle, you know, how do you, how do you intentionally pour into people and tell people what you see in them if you don't really know them all that well and you don't want to be salesy? Because I think that's where it comes across salesy, like just pulling yes. right there. <laughs> you like, hey, I just met you, but you're amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So like more like cold messaging. I think that that is really, um, for me, how, let me think about this. Let me think about this because I don't want to just say whatever comes first to my mind because I'm, I'm just trying to think. I messaged a girl today. Okay, here's a great example. I met this waitress at Chili's and I leaned over to my husband. I actually hit him on the arm and I was like, she'd be amazing at this. And her name was Megan Looper. So keep her, I mean, you guys are going to hear about her. She hasn't signed up yet, but she's going to, she doesn't know it. So I met her at Chili's. So I've met her one time. I've had maybe combined like a five minute conversation with her. I messaged her and just said, Hey, I know I hardly even know you, but girl, you have something about you. There is a spirit about you that is like fierce and just like a mountain mover. And I just think the world of you, and I would love to have you on my team. And this is, and I kind of just gave her a quick little, like, you know, it's, uh, what did I end it with? I said, I'd love to have you on my team. You would be amazing at doing what I do. And she responded, this was just today. She responded with, I'm listening with exclamation points. So then that was my opportunity to send her a little more information. So I sent her a um, product video and I sent her a business video. And, um, and so, and then I've been at sipping season. I have not checked all my messages, but I'm going to sign her up. But so when I think about that, it's like, it's not really pulling for it, but it's like, what is attracting you to them? Because if it's not attracting you to them, we want to, we want to, kind of look at that and say, okay, well, what, you know, what could attract me to them or what, what made me, what made them stand out to me? Um, and, and kind of just looking, not that we're like pulling from the air, but like, if there's just something in somebody, because sometimes, and I don't know if this is for everybody, but there's just, sometimes there's that person. You're just like, man, that is it. You got what it, there's a little spark there for something. And I feel like that is that nudging you know, that we need to really pay attention to and reach out to those people and share that. So there is, I also just love that magic message. It's like, Hey, hey like, have you ever heard of Plexus before? Um, you know, there's things that you can do that I feel like are more of a blanket generic answer to that. Um, I don't know that I really have like a certain script that I would use for specific cold messaging, but I do think like just a brief meeting, you can really tell a lot about a person, you know, yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I love that because it's not a cookie cutter thing. Like we are yeah. dealing with people and we want to make sure that our heart is shown and that we're making it about them and not about us. But I do know that there are a lot of amazing women on our team who have been killing it and who have been sending messages like that to their dream teamers. And I know that their wheels are probably spinning like, okay, but how do we continue to be intentional if we don't know people all that well? Um, I'm going to make sure be intentional even if you don't yeah. that well. Yeah. Okay, guys, we have one minute left, so I'm going to go ahead and end the call so it doesn't just rudely interrupt and end it for <laughs> us. I am so thankful for you. I know that you lit a fire under so many of us and just you sharing your story and you're exactly right. Your boldness has blessed us. And so I'm so excited to cheer you on to Diamond, hopefully very, very soon. Will you be singing at convention this year? Do you think? Uh, yes, I will. Yep. Yay. I'm okay. excited. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for thank being on. Thank you so much. It was an honor. And then, uh, accountability girls, just log off of this um, link and then come back to this link. We'll see you guys in like two minutes. Okay. Bye, everyone.